Hey, welcome back. It's Pat from PJM Scheduling Services. So today I want to talk about out of sequence progress. Wanted to show you what it is um, and how you can find it and give you some suggestions for how you can correct uh, instances of out of sequence progress. So just for context, what is out of sequence progress? Well, all it is is you, you've you progressed your schedule in a way that doesn't honor the relationships that you have in your schedule. So for instance, we have activity one has a finish to start uh, relationship to activity two. And so if I were to go and uh, finish activity two, you know, when I do my progress, my, my schedule update, if I finish activity two, but activity one hasn't finished yet, well, this red line here, this relationship doesn't make sense. It's not logical because you can't, because according to how we've tied the schedule in, activity two shouldn't be able to start until activity one is finished. And activity one hasn't finished yet, and yet we're showing activity two as finished. So therefore, this is out of sequence progress, and um, it should be corrected because that this relationship uh, appears to not make sense. So um, yeah, there's two forms of sch scheduling that are primarily used. If you go to your schedule now button, your, your F9 hotkey, and you go to options, you'll notice there's three options down here. Um, most people don't use, I haven't seen instances of people using actual dates. The primary one you're gonna see required on your project is retain logic. It's very common and seldomly you'll see people use progress override. But it's good to know what the difference between those two are. Um, so retain logic basically honors the relationship that you that you have regardless of out of sequence progress. So let me show you. If I was to actually schedule this project um, using, so activity two has finished, and you'll notice activity one Although it doesn't have a direct tie to activity three, it using retained logic, it honors the relationship through activity two, which finished out of sequence, and it assumes that activity one, therefore, is a predecessor still to activity three, and it honors that relationship. And so there's kind of an invisible tie here between activity one and three, or an indirect tie. Um, and so therefore, activity three, cannot start until after activity one finishes. So that's retained logic. It's gonna retain the logic that you have in a schedule regard, regardless of um, out of sequence progress. On the other hand, if you have progress override and we schedule using that methodology, it's gonna break the tie between uh, activity one and two, it's no longer going to honor that relationship because um, it, it, according to the scheduling software, it doesn't make sense because you've started activity two prior to finishing activity one. So therefore, that relationship doesn't get carried through to activity three and that relationship gets broken. Um, so those are the two primary methodologies used when scheduling. Um, like I said, most people use retained logic. Um, and so using retained logic, that causes us to have to go and correct for uh, the instances of out of sequence progress. Um, so how do we find, so if we're using retained logic, you know, we have to correct for those instances of out of sequence progress, like how do we find those instances? Uh, very simple. We just go to the schedule button, make sure you have log to file and I say override existing, and go ahead, schedule the file, and it creates a log of, uh, it has like an internal log that P6 creates, where you'll go back to the schedule button, and now we can view the log. It's very important that you schedule first, because that's what generates the log file for this schedule, and oftentimes what, pe what happens is people won't schedule it, and they'll just jump to view log, but uh, what they don't realize is that log file is from the last time you actually scheduled your um, P6 software. So you might, you might have done it on another project. Um, and so it might be a different log that's unrelated to your opened project. So make sure 
you schedule the file fully and then redo it and you go to view log and this is the new log that gets generated. And if I go down here, there's a section called warnings and under that section we have out of sequence activities. And so here is the activity ID and the activity description. And so that we have one instance of out of sequence progress that needs to be corrected for. Um, and on your project, maybe there's a list of activities um, that, that get printed out. What I do, I've seen other videos where people say, well, use the remaining, early, like filter for the remaining early start where it's um, greater than the data date. And I don't like using that method because if your data date falls on a weekend, um, anything that's in progress that's on like a workday calendar is automatically going to get bumped out past the data date because um, it's they're going to create a gap there. So your filter is going to get, you know, your filter is not going to be a true filter for the things that are actually out of sequence. So I, I, I've tried to find other, I've, I've messed around with other filters and just haven't been able to find like a really good filter for looking for out of sequence activities. And this seems to be the best, um, the best way to find them is just go to this log. And what I do is I copy this information and then I'll open up an Excel file and I'll just paste it into Excel and it'll create that list of activity IDs. And what I'll do is just one by one, I'll just copy that activity ID. I'll go back to my P6. I'll close that out. And then I'll do control F, control F and I'll just paste that activity ID and search for that instance. And then I'll go and I'll correct that one instance. So the way that I would do it in this case is I would see, all right, this relationship is completed, but its predecessor is um, not started. So therefore I have to break that tie. And so maybe I remove that relationship and I'll tie it to a logical predecessor that maybe makes more sense than that activity one. So in this case, maybe it's the notice to proceed and I'll instead tie those two activities together. Now, the issue that this creates is I have to go back to activity one because I just broke that tie and I left that one without a successor. So I wanna make sure that I have a logical tie after activity one um, to my schedule. I just wanna make sure that that's properly tied in. So then I go to activity one and I'll tie that to the appropriate successor, which in this case I'll say is activity three. And now I'll reschedule that, that instance and a new log file gets created. So I'll, now I'll go to view log and I'll see my out of sequence activities. Uh, I don't have any. So we were able to correct for that. Um, so yeah, that's how you, that's a little bit about out of sequence progress, how to find it, um, a way to, to, uh, correct for it. Um, yeah, if you have a filter in mind that, that works for you for how to find out of sequence activities, I'd love to hear about it. So leave a comment down below. And on a separate note, if you're looking for uh, like a schedule tutor, I do scheduling, uh, I do schedule tutoring. And, uh, so feel free to come over to to our website at pjmss.com. And if you're looking for live tutoring, just click on that get, get live help and uh, submit a request and I'll, I'll uh, directly get back to you and hopefully I can help you, help you out if you're struggling through your schedule and need some help. So um, yeah, thanks for stopping by. See you next time.